When trying to figure out how to get Cura working for the XYZ DaVinci Pro, I found lots of two to three year old forum posts where it sounded like a couple people had figured it out, but ultimately most people still hadn't. So to demonstrate that it is indeed possible, here is the normal XYZ startup sequence for printing. And here's the new startup sequence now that I'm slicing with Cura. For those of us running XYZ DaVinci printers, we are limited in two key ways. First, unless you're using a pro printer, you can only use XYZ branded filament. However, there is a hack that will bypass that. The other limitation is which slicer you can use. And no, not that kind of slicer. The default XYZ slicer isn't horrible, but why settle for only two infill patterns when you could have a dozen? Also, when you're using support material, you can have the flexibility to only have support come off the build plate rather than the top surfaces of the object you're building. That's a nice feature not present in the XYZ software. And I could spend 20 minutes going on about vase mode, tree support, fuzzy skin, being able to preview each layer before it starts, but I'd be here for about 19 minutes beyond the average YouTube viewer's attention span. Since getting Ultimaker Cura to work for my XYZ Pro, I have not once gone back and used XYZ Wear. To do any slicing, that is. Because if you want to download the prints to the printer over USB or Wi-Fi, you will still have to use XYZ Wear just long enough to transfer the file to the printer. Unless, of course, you wanted to get adventurous and take the micro SD card off the control board and overwrite the sample G-code file. Installing Cura is as basic and easy as installing any other program out there until you get to setting up for your specific printer. But just before I reveal the numbers you're going to type in at the screen, do stick around for the next full 60 seconds of the video because your speed and extrusion settings will also be totally different as you're about to see. So here are the settings I typed in at the printer setup screen for my DaVinci Pro. If you have another DaVinci printer, just change these settings highlighted here to reflect the build area of your printer. If you want to quickly punch in some speed settings, here's what I'm using to get some basic up and working prints. These speed settings that I've come up with are just basic fail safes. If you want to print faster, you can adjust these numbers as you go, but just know that if you use these numbers, things should work out for most people out there. It's the internet, so I can't make any 100% guarantees. Someone will find a way to screw it up. One important thing to note is that if you're opening XYZWare, you need to close Cura before you open XYZWare because Cura will tie up that USB connection to the printer, so XYZWare is going to have a hard time talking to it. A couple other things you do lose. You lose the ability to see a progress bar or time remaining on your prints, not that the XYZ printer had anything close to a reliable estimate for time remaining anyway. The first print I tried with Cura, I did use the same settings I used in my XYZ wear, and things did not turn out good at all, as you can see here. Definitely not enough material being extruded, and you can even see on that second layer the individual passes did not stick to each other. So, thinking that it was going too fast, which it definitely was, I dropped the speed from around 60 millimeters a second down to 37 and still the bottom layer passes were not sticking together. Dropping the speed down to 25 millimeters a second and cranking the flow up to 101%, again, still not enough material, although it did look as though the bottom layer was sticking better together. Dropping the speed to 22 millimeters a second and 125% flow, we can see that things are actually starting to go in the right direction. They're not there yet, but they're getting there. Going back up to 25 millimeters a second and 175 percent flow, we can see that the infill is getting there. I'm printing this without walls, but there's still some gaps in the infill. Curious to see if this is just infill not getting enough fill or if walls would suffer from the same thing. Same settings, but I printed with a wall. 
So next up is another block with one wall, 25 millimeters a second, this time with 205% flow, and this layer height, same as all the other previous prints, is at 0.3 millimeters. And there are some gaps in the wall, but it's only in specific places next to certain sections of infill. And for my last test piece, 25 millimeters a second, 205% flow, two walls at 0.25 millimeter layer height. And finally, there are no gaps in the wall. Now subsequently, I've been able to bring the printer speed back up to where I'm printing about 30 to 35 for any of my walls or anything that shows on my prints, and things seem to be working out okay. That's it for this video. Like, share, donate, or download a free mini ITX computer case. If you're a reviewer or a journalist, please include my Dogecoin address and channel name, and make sure to check out these other videos about computers and 3D printing over here. I'll see you guys in the next one.